Kenyans are keen on an electoral body that is democratic, transparent, and accountable in both internal and external operations, and that enjoys the full confidence of our people. Even those who believe that last year's elections were credible will agree that there are problems with the IBC and its own credibility. The so-called mix-up that led to postponement of uh, gubernatorial elections in Mombasa and Kakamega last year is still a manifestation of a problem with transparency, accountability, and professionalism at that body. When we as Mio went to court over presidential election results, Smartmatic, the provider of election technology, shocked us with a declaration that we could not access the server because it took compromises other operations. Indeed, it went against a direct a directive of the highest court in the land, the Supreme Court. They said they couldn't do that. That says a lot about the kind of deal IBC got our country into. As a country, we have in the last decade tried to embrace modern systems for collection, coalition, transmission, and tallying of election results. We have adopted results management systems that combine traditional vote counting and tallying processes and use of technology to verify voter eligibility, register voters, and transmit results. We have modified electoral laws to allow political parties to independently tally the results. But as we have witnessed in Kenya, both in, 20, in the 2017 and 2022 technology, uh, technologies getting compromised and results altered. This has severely damaged the credibility of IEBC. Let me cite an example about credibility of IEBC. According to the Gallup poll, 64% of Kenyans did not have confidence in the honesty of elections as we prepared for 2022 polls. Similarly, the Afrobarometer survey shows that 24% of Kenyans thought that elections are not free at all, are not at all free and fair. A further 18% thought that elections may be free and fair, but there are major problems. Only 23% of Kenyans thought that elections are completely free and fair as we headed to the polls in 2022. The Afrobarometer survey further showed that 34% of Kenyans did not trust our election management body, the IABC, at all. And another 23% trusted IBC only a little. Only 19% trusted IBC a lot as we headed to the polls in 2022. According to the Gallup poll, the percentage of Kenyans who have confidence in the honest of elections declined from 58% in 2015 to only 35% in 2021. And please remember, even as the results controversial as they were, 8 million Kenyans refused to vote out of the, uh, those registered. That should make it clear to everyone that you have to rethink IABC and in good time. Time is, of course, Kaguchia, not Kaguchia, Morio, extremely of the essence. I submit that reconstitution of IABC is a matter of grave national interest, and we should approach it as such. Another area under consideration at this forum is equally of great concern, not just to Azimio La Moja, one Kenya coalition party, but to our country as a whole. The growth or otherwise of our democracy is heavily dependent on the kind of election management body we evolve and the rules we put in place with regard to financing of elections. In our country, as elsewhere, we have seen that democracy can, on, can, <laughs> can be on trial, but it can also be on sale. Both jeopardize the stability and progress of the nation. We have to agree that as a country, we have a money problem when it comes to elections. Money is flooding our political system. In the university, you used to say money has been poured. <laughs> okay. Money is enabling only a handful of billionaires to decide who becomes governor, who gets into be a counter-assembly representative, a member of parliament, 
and even decide who runs and who eventually sits at the state house as president. There are millions of ordinary Kenyans with wonderful and revolutionary ideas, progressive ideas, I call them, on how we can take our country forward. But those people are being locked out of politics or leadership because they have no capacity to raise massive campaign cash, make massive financial contributions. Indeed, we are seeing a resurgence of Arambi once again. They make massive financial contributions to political parties or candidates. They hire high-priced lobbyists, campaign experts, and lawyers that tilt the playing field in their favor. And so, such people sit back and become spectators because they see the democracy being on sale to the highest bidder. They see the system is already rigged by the money. It gets worse when finances come from outsiders and with a known and undeclared interest in the leadership of our country. This kind of development decreases the political participation that is a requisite part of our attempt at being, at being a democracy.